Good morning. Well, today is Saturday, and usually we associate Saturdays with Our Lady. And so Our Lady has a message for us this morning, specifically on the area of sexual purity. So here goes. My children, today I desire to talk to you about something so very important, and yet so something delicate, sexual purity. My little ones, I am your Heavenly Mother, and as I look upon your world, I see a world steeped in sexual impurity. Yet, like a good mother, I desire to help my children and to wash the stains of sexual sins from your souls. Think, my little ones, how often you wash your clothes, and then, my little ones, do the same with your souls. Sexual sin is like a red wine stain on a white jumper. It cannot simply be removed like a chocolate stain or other. This is why it is imperative, my children, that you do your best to avoid sexual sin, and when or if you do fall, to come to Jesus regularly in the Sacrament of Reconciliation. My children, be not embarrassed or ashamed when you fall into sexual sin, despite doing your best to avoid it, but continue to trust in Jesus and continue to help each other through prayer groups and support groups to overcome these battles together. However, for those of you who make no effort or minimal effort to avoid sexual sin and teach others to do the same, you are putting your souls in very great danger. Read the teachings of the Church and the lives of the saints, and you will see that the battle against sexual sin is very serious and real, and all the saints took this battle very seriously. Repent, my children, and come to me, and together we will overcome and achieve sexual purity and holiness. Well, Our Lady certainly doesn't mince her words. And yet Our Lady is just so, so motherly. And as I was receiving this message, the image that came to me was like Our Lady looking on a soccer pitch. And it's like all the children were playing soccer and they'd been playing for ages, but they were all dirty and muddy because they got wet and tackling and all the rest. And Our Lady is looking on these children, her children, with love. And she just wants to help them, to clean them up, clean their clothes, get them to have a good shower and bring them to safety. And so it's the same when she's saying when she's looking on the world. Our Lady is looking on a world of terrible sexual impurity. Now we all know from the teachings of the church that sexual sin includes masturbation, includes lust, lustful thoughts, um, sex before marriage, gay sex, homosexual sex, obviously the same thing, and all sorts of other things. Even in marriage, there can be an awful lot of sexual sin as well, by the way. And so that's basically, we all know what sexual sin is. We just have to read the catechism and read the teachings of the church to um, know what that is. Yet like a good mother, she says, I desire to help my children and to wash the stains of sexual sins from your souls. So Our Lady isn't shaming us, you see. Our Lady knows how it's difficult, why it's difficult, and she wants to help us, and she's so gentle. And the thing you see about Our Lady is, Our Lady isn't surprised by sexual sin. It's like, for example, imagine going back to the soccer example. You know that lady, or sometimes it's the man, but the person that washes all the soccer gear for the hurling team, or the football team, or the soccer team. They couldn't care less. There might be blood stains, there might be mud stains, there might be whatever stains. Their job is to clean it. They're not interested in the stains. And so it's the same with Our Lady. Our Lady has no hang-up about sexual sins in that sense. She knows how to deal with these things. Another example is it's like a mother who's changing the diaper of her baby. She's used to it. It's poo. She knows what to do. And so Our Lady is the same thing when it comes to these type of sexual sins. We can talk to Our Lady about all these things. Struggles with sex, struggles with masturbation. If you're gay, you can talk to her about that whole world as well. 
Our lady gets it. She understands. She's there to help. Simple as that. But she goes on to say that sexual sin is like a red wine stain on a white jumper and it cannot simply be removed like a chocolate stain or other. Now, as you can see, I'm wearing a nice white jumper today. And it's true. I could go out today, for example, go to a coffee shop and I don't know, a little piece of bread and a bit of jam might um, fall on my jumper. But if I go home or if I get a bit of paper, I can wipe it off and I won't need to wash it straight away. But it's different if a glass of wine or a wine stain went onto my jumper. It seeps into the very fabric. And even though you try to wipe it off, it doesn't come off. And so our lady is saying the same thing when it comes to sexual sin. She's not trying to frighten us. She's just trying to say it's more difficult to get out. That's what she's saying. So if you have other sins that you commit, like, I don't know, a little bit of gossip or a little bit of this or a little bit of that, they're not um, as deep in the soul. That's what she's saying. They're not good either, by the way, but they're not as deep in the soul. And so that's what Our Lady is saying, that we must do all we can to avoid sexual sin, but also to come regularly to the sacrament of reconciliation, in other words, confession. And some people, of course, are afraid maybe to say to the priest that they struggled with masturbation or they had sex or they did something or they did whatever. But find a good priest. Some priests can be judgmental. It is true. Not all priests are able or willing to hear all that. But my experience, 90% of priests are very, very good when you talk to them about these type of areas. Why? Because nearly every second person going to confession is struggling with lust, guys. So we kind of have to um, not take it too seriously on that level. So then Our Lady gives two messages here. She says, for those of us, those people who are doing their best to live a life of sexual purity, would even doing their best, they're struggling. She says, do not be embarrassed or ashamed when you fall. I used to work in Australia in a group, it was a, a ministry, and it dealt nearly entirely with people with sexual addictions. They were prayerful people, they were good people, they were reading the Bible, they were getting lots of healing, and yet they were struggling enormously at times with masturbation, with sexual activity, with rubbing tubs and all sorts of stuff, acting out in different ways. And even though they were struggling, in their struggle they were moving forward and you could see how they were praying, you could see how they were doing their best. But during the week, I don't know, events would happen, stress would happen, they would get triggered, they couldn't sleep at night, they would have a row with their wife or something, I don't know. And in moments of weakness they would slip up and they would do something. But Our Lady is saying, do not be embarrassed or ashamed when you find yourself in that category because God sees your heart. He sees how much you're trying and the, the devil would like to shame you. So instead, she says, continue to trust in Jesus and continue to help each other through prayer groups and support groups. And it is true, prayer groups, support groups, men's groups, all these type of things can make an enormous amount of difference. It can be very, very important and obviously essentially to have a good sacramental life, but it can be so very important to have a group of other people struggling with the same thing that you can talk about. Instead of spending lonely nights and struggling, people go out together, they have friendships together, they have activity together. And that phrase, the devil makes work for idle hands, is so, so very true when it comes to this whole area. So the key of having support groups, and again, evil spirit would like to lock people in shame, thinking oh, you could never tell your friends you're struggling with that. You could never tell your friends that you struggle with porn. You could never tell your friends that you're gay and you're struggling with that world or something. The devil is an expert at trying to get you to handle it on your own because he knows you can't. Whereas the Holy Spirit is the opposite. He's saying it's together. With the help of the sacraments, with the help of each other, it's together we're going to overcome. And also it teaches us humility to um, open up and to help each other. However, she goes on with a warning. She says, for those of you who make no effort or minimal effort to avoid sexual sin and teach others to do the same, you are putting your souls in very great danger. So it is true, you see, some people are struggling with sexual sins and all sorts of sins really, but they're struggling, they're doing their best. Whereas other people are committing the same sins and they're not struggling at all. They see nothing wrong with it. They see just a part of nature. They would never go to confession about it. They don't see the problem whatsoever. And if you told them that you were struggling, they'll probably just laugh at you and tell you that that's due to your Catholic upbringing and your Catholic guilt and you basically needed to get a life. But when we read this message, we see, well, in a much nicer way, Our Lady is telling these people that they need to get a life. They need to get an eternal life because otherwise, by committing these type of sins on a regular basis, not going to confession, not bringing it to prayer, thinking there's nothing wrong with it, 
giving very bad example to others and teaching other people to do the same, that they are putting their own souls in very great danger. And also, they're also putting the souls of other people in danger as well. However, Our Lady is full of love for these people too, which is why she says, read the teachings of the church and the lives of the saints, and you will see that the battle against sexual sin is very serious and real, and all the saints took this battle seriously. So in other words, she's not trying to condemn anyone, but she's just trying to say, come on guys, look, the teachings of the church are there for the last 2,000 years. Look at the lives of the saints, look at the lives of the mystics, look at them all. They all took this thing really, really seriously. It is really serious. God is serious about this thing. God has very high standards of holiness. Lust is not part of it. And come on, be real. Jesus is here to help us. Our Lady is here to help us. Prayer is here to help us. But we just cannot change the rules. So she's just saying it's a wake-up call. You really just cannot have your cake and eat it when it comes to this area. So finally she says, Repent, my children, and come to me, and together we will overcome and achieve sexual purity and holiness. So as usual, Our Lady finishes on hope. Our Lady is not asking us to become sexually pure overnight on our own. Number one, she knows it could take 20, 30, 40 years. She's asking us to do our best. She's asking us to pray. She's asking us to pray the rosary. She's asking us to keep our thoughts pure as possible. That can happen through spiritual reading. That can happen through having good friends as well and being careful of what we watch on the television and all these type of things. So she's asking us that. She's also asking us to help each other, to support each other, to go to confession, to go to prayer groups. So Our Lady is saying that there is a way, there is a road, and there are people on this journey and to branch in. And as I said, I always use the example of a language. If tomorrow you decided you wanted to learn Chinese or to learn a foreign language, you would join a group of people doing the same and together over time you would achieve it. And it's the same thing with sexual purity. If we take these areas seriously, well then if we find groups of like-minded people who are doing the same thing, we become part of that group, we help each other, we love each other, we support each other, then we will overcome and we will achieve with Our Lady sexual purity and holiness. So on that note, let us do our best to live lives of sexual purity, live lives of holiness. Also let us do our best to talk about it. It's one of these issues that it's not easy to talk about because you can be accused of shaming and blaming and being old-fashioned and all sorts of stuff. And so let us pray for people and please pray for me as well because I'm talking about it. I'm sure some people um, would prefer that I didn't. So there you go. So on that note, have a great Saturday and let us look to Our Lady and think of her smile, her love and realise heaven has got so much more to offer. If Our Lady is asking us to keep away from one area, it's because she has something far, 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 far better. Remember, Satan, he's the liar, he's the deceiver, and he always wants to keep us away from God's blessings. And he does that often by using the passions. And what greater passion at times in today's world than lust and sex, because we all know that it's pleasurable. And so Satan uses this to trick us and to deceive us and to distract us and to keep us away from the beautiful gifts of the Holy Spirit and the beautiful gift of knowing Jesus and the beautiful inner joy and inner peace that that gives. So let us be wise, let us help each other, support each other, pray with each other, and do all that we can to live lives of sexual purity and holiness. So on that note, please pray for me and talk to you soon.